Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you some more about resin. What I've got here is Barnes Epoxy Glass Resin Part A and Part B. Here I have some items that I resined yesterday and these are the ones that I'm going to be doing today. And these are some coasters that I'm going to be doing today. I've got them sitting on some blocks of wood. We want to make sure the resin doesn't get underneath though because if it does and it goes on this it will stick. So I'm very careful at making sure the resin only stays on the tops, possibly the sides. But if the resin touches this wood, then it'll stick to this and not come off. With these, it doesn't matter if the resin gets on the bottom because they're on silicon mats. Therefore, it won't stick. And instead, you'll get a surface like that on the bottom. Where's another one? This is one of my stones that I did yesterday. See, it just peels straight off the bottom which is perfect for rocks if you're wanting to do some resin on rocks, which are really good for the garden. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we've got the epoxy glass part A, and I'm just going to guess how much I'm gonna pour in. This one is quite thick. I'm gonna fill it up about a third of the way, maybe a little bit less. Now we have the part B component and we want to make sure we've got the same amount of each. So it's a good idea to mark on the cups a line so you're making sure you get exactly the same amount of each. When you've done it a few times you can pretty much eyeball it like I'm doing. So now I'm going to get part B because it's a little bit thinner and runnier than part A and I'm going to pour it straight in to part A. I want to make sure I get all of it out. And as you can see, I'm actually using a, what's this called? A, like a spatula kind of um, skewer. skewer, that's it. And it's got that flat bit on the bottom of it, which makes it really good for mixing. You can also use paddle pop sticks as well. When you're mixing it, you wanna make sure that you get all the sides and all the bottom. You wanna mix it for about three minutes. Some brands recommend mixing it for five minutes, but you really wanna scrape the sides and get the bottom and give it a really good stir. And as you can see, there are quite a few bubbles, and that's why we have the chef's gun, the blowtorch gun, because we're gonna pop that on over the top once the resin's been applied, and it's gonna get rid of all the bubbles for us. Okay, so that looks pretty good now, pretty mixed. Don't mind the two three-year-old girls playing in the background. <laughs> So all the sides have been mixed and all the areas in the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to do one of the coasters first. So as you can see, as I showed you before, the coasters are just sitting on blocks of wood. We want to make sure that the resin doesn't go underneath. And this is all I do. I simply pour a blob of resin on top. I just eyeball it. I all, I've always eyeballed it. I've never measured the amount. That one will probably need a bit more, but. See, I just pour a little amount of, probably about oh, a teaspoon maybe. And now all I do is just push it. Might need a little bit more, but I'll push this out to the sides. As you can see, I just push it all around and then swipe it over the sides. See, I'm gonna need a little bit more resin on here. Just like that. And because it's so thick, I find that it doesn't go down the sides. It doesn't drip down the sides at all. Like that, nice and easy. Now I've got a little bit of fluff on there. Let me get that out. And how long can you like manipulate and play with it before it comes too dry? 
Well, I think you've got about half an hour to about 45 minutes working time with the resin before it starts to get way too thick. Um, I try and work reasonably fast when I'm using it, try to get it all done within half an hour. Um, if you're wanting to put the resin down the sides of coasters, then it's probably good to do that around the half an hour to 40, 40 minute mark because it will be thicker and it'll stick easier. Now, if I tried to add resins around the sides, it would probably just run off and not stick properly. So yeah, it wouldn't work around the sides now. So next one, as you can see, I'm just gonna push it. It's really thick, it's just like working with honey. Push it to the sides. And I'm using uh, latex non-powdered gloves. We want to make sure we don't have any powder on the gloves that we're using because that would be not good. <laughs> All over the sides and you hold it up to the light. You can just get me in the in the video. If you hold it up to eye height, you can really see where you if there are any spots that you need to go over again. Okay, last one here. Definitely gonna need a little bit more resin on this one. I think I might pour some more on. There we go. That's as easy as that. Move it to the sides. Might even use a little bit more actually. So the key to doing, or the key to working with resin is to be super organized before. You wanna make sure you've got everything set up, ready to go. So you don't have to touch too many things after you start touching the resin. Okay, so there's the coasters pretty much done. I don't think I'll add any more to it, but I will show you how to do. We get the blowtorch. Now, if you put foil around the blowtorch, that can make the blowtorch last longer because you don't get resin stuck in it anywhere. Um, I've just taken the foil off this actually, so hopefully I'll be right. Okay, if you want to get down close with the camera, you might be able to see the bubbles. This just really disperses all the bubbles. Disperses, is that the right word? <laughs> Gets rid of all the air bubbles. It gives it just it pops them. Yeah, it just pops them, yeah, and it just gets rid of, um, it gives it that glass finish, doesn't it? it makes them look nice and shiny. I think it also removes like the marks from where you've pushed it around so it makes it look a lot smoother. Yeah. So if you look in the light, now we can't see all those air bubbles. Air bubbles and marks. Warming the resin does make it thinner too. So you need to make sure you do a quick application over the top. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, so all I do with the stones is I just do it with my hands. Oh, let me pour it on first. So I just do it, make sure I've got good gloves on, non-powdered gloves, as I said before. And I simply roll the resin around on them. I actually got this idea from Happy Dotting Company. They have some really good advice on YouTube as well. So make sure you check out them. These stones are actually molds from Happy Dotting Company as well. So that's not how you used to do it. So you used to just pour it over and... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, try, I've tried a few different ways of doing it and I reckon this is just the easiest. Yeah. I mean, because you're not going to use, reuse those gloves afterwards anyway. Oh, no, they'll be going straight in the bin. But what I have found is sometimes if you if it, the, the layer's not thick enough, 
it will separate a little bit almost. So just put a little bit more and then maybe just rub with your finger. Super simple like that. And we don't want drips if we can avoid it. So we don't want it to be too thick, too thick. And we also don't want it to be too thin. So practice makes perfect. If there are drips though, they're pretty easy to get off. You can file them off or you can bash them off, heat them up a bit with a gun and just knock them off with um, a scraper or something. And that's it. Easy peasy.